Hi, my name's Ethan Lawrence. This is Jesse Leach from Kill Switch Engage. Hi, I'm Scotty Wartooth. Hi, my name's Sean Smith. Hi, my name is Deshaun Kiva. Hey, this is Ryan McCombs from the band Soil. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is the Raging Cajun Lash Baru. Hi, I'm Valentina Vizintin, and I am a special effects makeup artist, but also a metal singer. And I'm here at the Chronicles of Podcast with Tom and Jamie. So check it out. Stay with us. Happy man. Hello, mate. Hi, yeah. Hello. Welcome back to another edition. The Chronicles of Podcast for a late night recording. Normally, you join in, so I thought I wouldn't bother doing the last <laughs> bit. I fully expect you to join in. So. <laughs> Um, because I know it's what you like to do, and then because of Zoom's linky, whatever it's called, it's delayed. So I would have gone record as you started, so it went <laughs> record, record, ding, ding, and it would have sounded fucking horrendous. Um, sound like a 90s dance track, probably. Oh, no, because 90s dance tracks are tunes. That's a fair point. Every single one that you get is just like, God, this is so good. <laughs> What's it? Listening... Sorry. Go on. I was gonna say, I heard, um. 9 p.m. till I come again for the first time the other day. I was like, God, this was a tune, wasn't it? What's it called? 9 p.m. till I come. Do, 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 9 p.m. till I come. I love that. <laughs> oh, it's 9 p.m. I'd like to come now. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love the like, just obviously making sweet, sweet love to your wife, and it's like 8 30, like, fat love. We're going to go for half an hour. I'm not allowed to come till nine. I yeah, that's how much of that. I just I remember being obsessed with Ultra Beats Pretty Green Eyes. I remember oh, being I remember absolutely that. obsessed with that song. Oh Pretty I, Green Eyes. Thanks for that. That was <laughs> just just completely not even, that's, like, that's fine. For those of you who weren't aware, that's how the chorus went. Yes, of course. Pretty green eyes. Um <laughs> But I had a thought. So obviously, following on from my McDonald's conversation last week, I'm going to bring yes. them up again. Oh, okay. So um, I truly feel they should put McDonald's drive throughs on driving tests. Because, okay. because, first things first, the amount of parking people that go to them to begin with, I feel like I should be part of the, the three point turn or the parking or the reverse or, stuff, or a drive through. Um, and you can go wherever yes. you want. Because those fucking turnings and how thin that road is. I mean, if you can get through that, that like, hit in the curb, I think you should pass automatically. I mean, That's... I can completely see the logic. I'm down for this. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Do you know, I don't. Do Burger King have drive-throughs? They must do. I don't. There's one in Gloucester. I don't know. To be honest, I don't remember the last time I saw one, but they might be. Didn't Burger King like disappear for a while, then come back? Yeah, it was like massive and like in competition with McDonald's, and then it fucked off, and then it came back, and it's like. Every now and again, you see one. Yeah, and their burgers are like 15 quid. <laughs> That's why no one goes to them, because they're so fucking expensive. And they're like, what we'll do is we use a Bristolian woman to sell it for us. And I what? think that will really that will really fucking sell it to everybody, because no one can be angry at a Bristolian. <laughs> not the effort, the smoke effort? Or it's made by Schmook? <laughs> I've not seen that. Have you not seen that? Okay. <laughs> That's sure amazing, though. I'm sure you're right. Yes, thanks. <laughs> My point is proven. Yeah, to fair. My point is proven. But yeah, I feel like they should put drive throughs on fucking driving tests to see if you can actually weave your way through the fucking how tiny those turnings are and how tiny that road is. I mean, without, I without, think, the, yeah. wing, without the wing mirror clipping their window. <laughs> and that's, you know what I mean? Because of how fucking like, tight it is. Like, how do you, how close do you get? It's like, how close do you want to fucking get? Do you know what I mean? For short people, that's fucking awful because they've got to <laughs> really fucking reach. Plus, you get like, Test and how quickly you can stop because the car in front of you just suddenly fucking stops at the window. There's loads of little test things in there. Yeah. I it's read a thing earlier as well, which was like, um, don't stare at us through the window or something. Like, make my food. You better make my you better put everything in there as well, because for some reason you can't get them right either. But yeah. I why I don't get that. How do you get it wrong? It's written on the fucking receipt. You just check it just, off as you're putting it in the bag. Just take your time. I know it's fast food, but it has to be fast service. The, the one that we go to, we go for the drive through You don't have time to look through the window. You literally drive up and go, get this, pay me, go to the next window, wait, yeah, okay, get your food, fuck off. All right, bye. 
That was Birmingham quick. Play. That was <laughs> fucking quick. Just Birmingham for you, mate. I don't think they actually really want to speak to anybody. Nah, don't blame them. Um, I remember being on a walk to work. This is, I think this is, a, I've not been back very long, I don't think. And it was one of those reasons where I was like, oh, I remember why I hate living here. And that was essentially because I was walking to work and I got to where KFC is on the Chukesby Road. Yes. Um, and this guy just stopped me out of nowhere and he's like, oh, mate, like, hello. This is like eight in the morning. And he was like, you'll never guess what? Like, yeah. He went, won a million last night, didn't I? I was like, did you? He goes, yeah, 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 won a million last night. So I'm going, I'm going to celebrate it down the Shamrock. What the fuck? And I was like, okay. <laughs> the Shamrock down the lower high street, the bar that nobody fucking goes to. Yeah, so I'll go down there, yeah, go have some celebratory drinks. Now, if I'd won a million quid, I don't think I'd want to go down the lower high street to the Shamrock pub for drinks. <laughs> I would be on a plane. Well, yeah, plus, I wouldn't be telling strangers that I've got a million quid. Yeah, it was weird as fuck. Was that after the races, by any chance? I can't remember. Sounds like something that happened happen after the races. I think it, it was. I think it was a fair while after. I don't think it was like pretty much straight after. Hmm. But it was just a bit of an odd. It's just odd. Like I would. I wouldn't be. You know, he should probably shook my hand and everything. That's a bit like you're just a very strange human being. Um. But still, it's just a really random moment. Like, oh, yeah, because that's exactly where you want to be when you're in a million, is you want to be going down the lower high street of Cheltenham to a pub that no one goes to. Yeah, I mean, I'm all in. He's like, come on, I'll see you later, yeah? It's like, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> is the Shamrock the one that's got, like, the green tiles on the outside? I, I think, think so. it's the right place. Yeah, I, yeah. Think I know what you mean, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anyone go in there. The one you probably die if you weren't in there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah because you're not a local, even though yeah. you are local, but you're not. No, you mean yeah. Uh, you haven't got so... the accent. Get out. No, <laughs> no. But, um, finally, uh, did you see the AI songs that took over Spotify a few weeks back? No. Buried tomorrow, villain of the story, uh, and a few other bands that I that I follow were going. These are not our songs. <laughs> yes, I did see this. I forgot about this. Yes, I did. What was that about? Yeah, I don't I know. It's mental, isn't it? Like someone's just decided to make loads of songs through AI and then start putting on everybody's pages. Is it that easy to add to Spotify? It must be. Must I, I, I've never tried, but apparently it is. If it was That's something that easily. I thought it was absolutely mental myself. Um. So yeah, yeah I just, I just like I just love the idea of it being like I don't know, bald cutter. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember seeing. I didn't actually go and look or listen to them, but I did see people posting about over it. Over, over, this how it is. <laughs> like all robotic, like that. Like, because yeah, yeah. didn't it, didn't it happen to Data Remember? It's happened to everybody, I think. Yeah, I think because someone was like, "Oh my god, a new Data Remember song," and everyone was like, "Yeah, have you listened to it? That fucking end of Data Remember. I don't know what that is." <laughs> yeah, so I don't know what that is. Though. Yeah, very weird. It's very very weird. Speaking of new music, I realise we'd, we, we'd like to discuss and listen to Rock and Metal on this show. I didn't actually ask, have you listened to the new Linkin Park song yet? No. Have you not? No. I really, really, really like it. And I know you're going to like everything, do. but of no, I, I genuinely really do. It's one of those things, like, fair play to them and everything else. I'm just not interested. No. I'm not doing that because I think it's cool to not be interested. I'm just generally not interested. Fair. Like... They do them. They do them, my friend. They do them. I've been, you know, I've been listening to... I don't know, my musical case has gone quite eclectic and it's quite different recently. You can tell we're knackered. Like, how boring <laughs> this conversation is. Fucking hell. It's not people boring. Listen, people listen to this edition going like, Jesus Christ, they're all right. Like, what's <laughs> wrong with you? all right. Just <laughs> fucked. Just, you know, at 11, 10.45 at the evening. So, you know, what can we say? There's a lot going on. Also... I went to ask. Any idea why the fuck this is a thing? I found this in the shop oh, the other day. Of course you bought it. I was intrigued. Why is so, this a thing? I've spoken to um, 
I spoke to Kim about it and she told me it's fucking disgusting and gave it a zero out of 10. That's Damon from A Virtue also bought it and gave it minus three out of 10. Uh, because why the fuck are Coca Cola going, I don't screw idea, biscuit cola? Yeah. I saw it in the shot and I was like, it's a quid. I'm, I'm going to find out for a quid. Jamie, is that can empty? Yeah, we drank it. To be honest, I couldn't even taste the Oreos. It was like I drank it and it was like, just tastes like coconut. Oh no, there's there's a slight hint of Oreo. There's nothing. What a, what a shock. Was, what a yeah. load of shit. Of and course you fucking bought it. I was just horribly intrigued. Apparently they've released Oreos that taste like Coke as well. But I've not seen them. I just... Um... Why? What? Why would you mix those two flavours together? Uh, Coke aren't exactly struggling for money, are they? No, no, that's what I mean. <laughs> And neither are Oreos. So what a weird ass crossover. It's such, I just, I think it's just. Uh, what's gonna be next? Fucking raspberries and you know cement. <laughs> cement of all raspberry. things to go with. Raspberry cement. You can eat this because raspberry flavored. Yeah, but I'll die. Yeah, but you can eat it. You lick it, just sticks. They might as own. well. They might as well just fucking do that. They might as well <laughs> just fucking. I don't know. Vanilla bed. <laughs> yeah, you can eat your bed. It tastes like vanilla. <laughs> it's just fucking dumb, man. I don't understand. I just don't get it. I think they're going to no. come up with the most crazy things they can think of. You I know, just... Tango released a mango flavor. Mango Tango. That <laughs> makes sense to me. Mango's a fruit. Goes yeah. well with a, with, a, with a soft drink, with a beverage like that. Biscuits, however, don't. What, oh, what's going to be <laughs> Coca-Cola next can be fucking roast dinner. Oh, please don't put that idea out. Roast Rolls dinner, Coca Cola, like <laughs> no, thank you. You're all good, to, uh, massive. But that's what they'll do. It'd be like fucking chicken or pork or something. <laughs> I was gonna say, if I go into a shop and find bourbon cream flavored fucking lemonade or some shit, I'm gonna be really upset. That's probably a thing. Probably, mind you. Do anything. They, Sainsbury's did a bourbon <laughs> biscuit with a black forest gatto filling. I saw that. I haven't tried, but I've. Seen I it. need to find that they haven't got them yet. And I'm like, get them now. <laughs> Just because stand at the desk, I'll oh, wait. Yeah, it's always like Coke went, oh, so the Bourbons are making Black Forest Gatto. Interesting. Oh, and ice cream. We've got peanut butter and ice cream. Now, wonderful. What should we do? Oreos. That's a great shout. What an excellent idea. Why did we never think this in the first place? Combining two things that do not go together. So I just want to be the fly on the wall in that board meeting, whether it's someone from Oreo or someone from Coke, and just went, i got an idea, guys. I have got an idea, and it's going to make us millions. I fully expect you to be like, delicious, loved it. Because no. you love everything. So. No. I, like I said, couldn't even taste it. It was odd. What the fact that you like, finished mm. it says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> the size of it, me and Becky shared it. So it's, <laughs> it's not really. Like I said, it wasn't disgusting. It wasn't like, Ugh. It was just like, what is this? This tastes of nothing. Stupid idea. Stupid, stupid, yeah. stupid idea. Yeah, what a waste of fucking money, eh? Absolutely. Before we move on, sir, I'm going to bring it to a little sombre moment because I feel we have to take a moment to pay our respects to someone because this week, the wonderful Michelle Kerf and Koshinova lost her life after a five-year battle with cancer. And the outpouring of love I've seen for this woman is absolutely insane. Like... We've not really had much dealings with Michelle because when we started coming along, she was obviously going through her battles. But if it wasn't for that company that she started, we wouldn't have been able to do all the things we've done at Bloodstock. So, you know, a massive thank you from us on that alone. But I was doing my research and looking at all the bands she's helped, like Slipknot, Trivia, Murder Dolls, wouldn't have made it in the UK if it wasn't for Michelle's help. It's absolutely insane. And I was reading somewhere that she was part, like, a part of Murder Dolls thing. Back in 2003, 2004, I was part of the Murder Doll Street team for Roadrunner Records. So I kind of wondered if she was part of that. Now I'm looking at it. So it's it's a mad that like even back then, she's helped support it. Oh, absolutely insane. The outpouring of love for her has been absolutely amazing. It really has. So. Yeah, it is. It's incredible. And um, we send all of our peace, love and hugs uh, to everyone at Costa Nostra, to all our friends and family, to everyone that knew her. Uh, because it sounds like she was a bit of a fucking legend. Yeah. Um, we did have very, very, very small dealings, uh, emails back and forth and whatnot when we first started doing yeah. our bloodstock stuff, and uh, she was nothing but lovely and an absolute hero. Uh, so, you know, 
Uh, all of our respects go out to everybody. Um, and it's a very, very sad time in the world of Rock and Metal. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it really is. We'd lost a fucking good one, it seems. So, yeah, all of our love to every, all of our family, friends, everyone. What is amazing is that GoFundMe for her funeral, when I checked <laughs> it yesterday, it was at 53K, which yes. is, and the title was 15. So, yeah. again, that just goes to show what an absolute hero she was. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Um, but uh, in regards to Linkin Park comment, um, oh, yes, I'll get to it at some point. I think yeah, it's just not, it's just not high. the new Our Mirage song came out, um, and that's just out of this world. So, the new what song? Our Mirage. I don't even know who that is. They are wonderful, um, metal core. They've got like emo vibes, but they're metal core at the same time. Good band, I highly recommend. They sound very up your street from that description. Their new song called Right Now, and it's you. I think he'd really like it, but. Sure, I don't know if he's like his voice, but then I heard some guy on America's Got Talent. Like you know, when you scroll through, like you doom scroll, or you go through reels, and you see like music and bands come up. There's a band I think they're called Nicotine Dolls. Um, so I didn't know this guy was a singer to begin with, but when he started singing on America's Got Talent, I just went, "Oh my god, his voice is insane!" Um, and he did a song called um, "Tell Me What Makes You Sad," and it's his own. It's his own song. And it's lush, and his voice is out of this world. So, tell me what makes, tell me what makes you sad. Uh, I've been to that recently a lot. I don't know why. Um, I think I'm appreciating vocals a lot at the moment, and I don't. Yeah. I, I really like. You know how much I love raspy voices and like that sort yes. of thing. Yeah, he very much has that. Um, and when they really go for it, it's like, like uh, 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 yeah, you can feel, you can hear the emotion and feel the power, like that sort of thing. You know, it's uh, very much like that. So I've been enjoying that a lot recently, and out of course, Al Mirage as well. Um, and I've found it, like a synth rock song that I'll send you. Um, okay. I can't for the life remember who it's by, but my god, it's catchy. Um, so again, thanks to Instagram reels, I'm finding loads of new music, and I love it when that happens. Oh yeah, that's the that's my favourite thing about these like TikTok and Reels and stuff like that. You just find so many different bands on it. It's mm. amazing. Absolutely. Um, how are you anyway? How's things? I'm good. I'm just knackered. Like I've had a long day at work with barely any staff on, so I've just been running around like an idiot. And plus, I sort of had a had a talk with myself today. I had a sat sat down, had a chat with myself, telling I need to get my fucking ass into gear and lose some bloody weight. So I was like, "You need me to do some jobs? Let's get some steps in." So I was just out running around trying to. Get my some steps. Get some steps in. Get your sleps in. Get me sleps in. Gotta get me sleps in. That sounds like an awful disease, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Oh, I've got a bad case of sleps in. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna make it, Julie. I don't think I'm gonna make it through night. Um it does. but on that note, it's time for Callum's Regions. Oh. Do you wanna know something? Callum will be able to tell you in Callum's Treachings. It's cereal soup. Ooh. Hello, this week's treat chains come from the set of my own podcast, That Gym Couple Podcast, that I host with my partner Lucy, where we discuss all things gyms, fitness, gym anxiety, and a bunch of other stuff in between. If you do have the opportunity to come and check us out at That Gym Couple Podcast on Spotify and YouTube, we'd very much appreciate it. Callum is back to treat the world, the nation, the universe, the people, the Milky Way, the galaxy, Mars, Venus, wherever you are, maybe wherever you may be from, whatever gaseous emission planet you live on, uh, Callum is treating you. So that's all I can say about that. Gaseous um, sure, emission planet. I'm pretty sure Neptune <laughs> kills you, I think, for the magic school bus taught me anyway. But it, it's, anyway, um, <laughs> Jamie, what is Callum treating us this week? Really, it doesn't matter if a glass is half full or half empty. What really matters is what's in it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, he's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where he's going after that for a second. I hope it's not fucking Oreo flavored Coke, Callum. That's all I can say. That fucking disgusting piece of shit. What was it? Was it Raspberry Ripple Fanta you drank last time as well? That was really nice. Raspberry Ripple Iron Brew. That was really nice. Iron Brew? Yeah, it was Raspberry Ripple Iron Brew. Yeah, Why they that. don't ever. Ever disgrace. I was waiting for that. My nation's drink ever again. You fucking leave that alone. I All did right? think it was quite brave. Never. I bet every single Scottish person just looked at that and went, What the fuck is that? <laughs> Probably. Absolutely not. And started throwing it like into the river or something. I don't fucking know. There's just no way you tamper with a delicacy like that. 
right no, to the streets no. of Glasgow all over oil flavored. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I love watching videos of people trying it for the first time. I think it was Euro the Euros when the Germans are trying it, and they were because obviously us and the Germans just got on really fucking well. Yeah, and they loved us so they didn't want us to leave. Um, and we gave them cans and cans and bottles of eye brew. They were like, "What the fuck is this?" They drank it. Went, "Why is that so delicious? It's bright orange. It's like nuclear orange." <laughs> And it's called Iron Brew. What's in it? What, what's it taste of? Iron Brew. Yeah, what's it taste? Yeah, it's fucking Iron Brew, mate. Like, I, don't, I don't know what you're fucking expecting, but it's fucking Iron Brew. I enjoy. Um, so, yeah. Don't be fucking touching our flavours, motherfuckers. Leave us alone. <laughs> Do whatever you fucking want to the English drinks, but leave us alone. And the Americans. We like our shit how it comes. We don't fucking need you fucking making it like a cocktail. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you want a fucking umbrella for that as well? Um, but yes, I mean, I would like a half, I don't know what I was going to say, a half a glass of coffee, but <laughs> iced coffee I'll take. Iced coffee I'd take. What would you prefer your glass to be half full with? I was going to say, I feel like if it's half full, then it's something that is nasty. You're like, oh, it's all, it's all there's half a glass. It's half full. But if it's really nice, you're like, oh, it's half empty. There's only half here. Oh, I just I was just curious to know what you'd oh. rather have out of your oh, just bed. generally in a drink. Not, oh, sorry. Not a fucking like a whole description of like <laughs> so basically what are you just saying? philosophy says that back in yes. nineteen forty six we would absolutely <laughs> love a glass of Coca Cola, but only if it was half empty because that means you enjoyed that beverage, but if it was half full then it can get in the fucking bin for all I care. Hmm. Um, I thought tough one in a couple in a glass, mate, to be honest with you. It's a tough one. But I'm probably going to say dandelion and burdock because I fucking love that stuff. I just never see choice. it. Rarely Strong see it, though. Choice. Yeah. I also want to know what cream of soda is. I love cream soda, but I don't know what it is. Like It's another one of them, yeah. Has someone ejaculated into the soda and gone, there's the cream part? <laughs> oh, I hope not. There's just random names for shit. Yeah, it's one of those I probably could find out if I just looked at the ingredients on it or Googled it, but at the same time, I don't want to. I don't think they even know. <laughs> probably. Well, they put on this go, uh, proxy butanol, <laughs> uh, flavorings, <laughs> um, white color. Yeah. White so, color. <laughs> have, you, have you seen the Pepsi Max Blue? I think electric, I think it's called. Oh, for fuck's sake. What's yeah, this? Yeah, I know. It's literally just called Pepsi Max Electric. Have and they put like white lightning in it? <laughs> That'd be amazing. But I'm reading the back and it literally, it literally says like Pepsi with flavorings. I'm like, what the fuck are the flavorings? Because I don't have a clue. They haven't got a clue themselves, that's why. <laughs> Even the top dogs at the top are like, let's call it electric. Yeah, that'll really get them selling. So I don't it's fucking weird. know. Yeah. They're obviously they're, they're, ne- they're never gonna compete with Coke ever. No. I don't know why Coke advertise. They don't need to. <laughs> they don't need to. They're like Mac is, they don't need to advertise. <laughs> Unless they want to sell it with Oreos, and then they got to advertise because no one's fucking buying it otherwise. No, wrong. That's so many levels. <laughs> Jamie, what else is Callum treating us this week? You know how some people don't have an inner monologue in their head. Does that mean telepathy wouldn't work on them? But then, if you had an inner monologue in your head, isn't that voices? Yeah, I suppose. So- it- hmm. Not everybody hears voices. I mean, I don't know. Do you have an inner monologue in your I don't think I monologue anything. I do. If I'm thinking about it, something, I hear it as a voice in my head. Do you, I don't. Do you not? No. See, that's weird to me. Because it's almost like I'm having a conversation with myself in my own head because I can hear my own voice now, telling me my oh, thoughts. Now you make sense. Now you make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's all come together now. I totally get it. <laughs> That just tells me everything I need to know, Jane. <laughs> after after being best friends for sixteen years and doing the show for five, it yeah, all now to comes. To... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so people telepathy is when people try to take control of your mind. It's like reading your thoughts. Reading your thoughts. That's it. Yeah. So, but I've always taken it because you say your thoughts in your head. People can hear what you're saying in your head. That's why I've always interpreted that. Mind you, if somebody could read my thoughts, I'd be like, "How the fuck can you do that?" <laughs> I'd be, I'd be <laughs> asking those questions. Do you know what I mean, do you remember that movie? What women want? What a lot of shit. 
I forgot about that film. Mel, Mel Gibson. Is it Mel Gibson? Helen Hunt? Mel Gibson. Yeah, Mel Gibson can read women's minds. God, that's oh. not a good. That's not a good mix, is it, in the real world? That's not even. Is that even going to go down well now? I doubt it. Probably not. No. Who the fuck thought of that? Like, just... as long as they're not Jewish women, they'll be fine. Um. Anyway. I don't get it. He's a massive anti-Semite, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Oh, so that joke would have been great if I'd known what you're on about. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I would, that would have been amazing. You would have nailed that at the park if I'd actually known what about oh. Gibson. Sorry, mate. Got a good joke in for once. There's a few people, there's a few people watching this going like, mate, oh, Stella, better than that fucking Ginger's ever said. <laughs> so. <laughs> what was the truth again? Oh, yeah, the money. Oh, yeah. So well, you don't hear thoughts in your head? No. That's blown my mind because I thought everyone did. I think about things, but I don't. The the my brain just start going. So anyway, do you remember that moment when you were to leave? <laughs> yeah, crazy, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely, brain. Yeah, I don't know why you're talking to me. Though. This is fucking weird. Why are you talking to me? Why am I? You know, just because I, I, just, I just assume everyone could do this. My head is going. How does Tom think? Because <laughs> I can't picture it. <laughs> How do I think? I, I don't know. We just. <laughs> I don't know. It's really baffling. This, this is getting weird. What's going on? It's like, I can't work out if it's just a weird topic or because we're so tired. Or I think I think it's both. Kind of yeah. yeah. <laughs> a bit of kumsu kumsa. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much you love that. I do. Yeah. I, th- I don't know, really. I'd just be more concerned with the fact that people could read my mind. Yeah. I'd know people could read my mind because they'd come over and just be like, are you okay? <laughs> I get people going over. It's like, is that the porn you watched, Dad? Oh, dude, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> Black leather couches? What? No. Stepsisters? <laughs> oh no! Wait, I'm in Jamie's head. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it would be. That's what it would be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, while the son of a bitch is enjoying his birthday in Lake Como, mm. what is Callum treating us this week? If they got jury duty summons, stranded astronauts would have the most believable and most unlikely reason for not being able to attend. (laughs) I'm assuming they haven't left yet. I was going to say, yeah, but if they're stranded, how would they even know they were given summons? Yeah, exactly, because there's no internet. There's no way there's Wi-Fi or internet there, surely. (laughs) Unless the satellite signals, I don't know. I'm intrigued now. Because obviously they, <laughs> but they they stream via there via satellite, don't they? So they still yeah. can get hold and talk to them. So, is there Wi-Fi in space? I don't know if it's Wi-Fi, but there's definitely some form of communication. They're like, Hello, <laughs> Gary, mate. So basically, what's happened is you've been called in for jury service. We're gonna have to bring you down. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to forfeit our mission that we spent billions of dollars <laughs> on. You know, where we're trying to infiltrate Jupiter, uh, but you're gonna have to come back. <laughs> this man broke his neighbour's fence. You've got to come down and sit on the jury yeah, for him. Could you imagine? <laughs> it would obviously be something fucking terrible as well. Oh, so he would. come back, he's like, got back from space, like, Jesus Christ, what? How long have I been gone? Feels like days. It's been like years. But he hasn't aged a bit. <laughs> um, and he sat there and it's like, so we're here for Michael Pendergast against Atlanta for basically <laughs> painting a fence green when it has to be purple. What? Is this what you fucking caught me from space down for? Are you fucking for real? Just wipes everybody out with a laser gun that he found up. I don't know. <laughs> Roll it down with him just in case. Tired treaches. Yeah, so basically, is, is that an alien? Oh, I don't know. Fuck it. It's too tired now. This is, this is kind of treaches, by the way. I just enjoyed this segment. For, you know, even though I absolutely fucking wiped out. I don't know why I'm northern all of a sudden. I don't know what's wrong with me. I know I'm just talking normally while I'm taking the piss out of my own show. <laughs> What's Night Rider doing here? Fucking hell, Northern Night Rider. That's a callback. <sighs> God, that was a good segment. We went, we went down and five and solved all the crime and bollocks, but he didn't fill <laughs> me up so we broke it down quite quickly, so a lot of people got away with it, bastards. <laughs> hey, Kit, want to go fat crime and stuff? <laughs> I love it. But yeah, I, I I think that they'd have to be told, but I don't think they probably would even open the mail because Obviously. they'd be like, well, they're in space. I'm open someone else's mail. It's illegal. That is so very true. Nobody would know. And then they'd get done for not being attending court and they get called to court for not having to attended jury duty, but they're in space. So they still don't know about that either. <laughs> so then they're still fucking in space. So they don't even know that they're being summoned. As soon as they land, 
fucking FBI rocks up, arrests them, and like they're done. <laughs> Game over for doing fuck all, but trying to I don't know infiltrate Saturn. <laughs> infiltrate um, Saturn. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it oh. is. It, but I completely get where he's coming from. Like, what an excuse to have. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm kind of not on the planet right now. <laughs> Hi there. I'm not on the planet right now. Uh, I can't come to the phone. I'll be back in about 2062. <laughs> Is there any chance I could join the jury versus by satellite link? Because I'm kind of yeah. out of the country. I love that. Or, <laughs> or I love this fact. So I'm going to go with guilty. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he did, or do I have any evidence? I've got to tell him he's guilty. Bye. And everyone's going, innocent, innocent. Oh, that bastard. We need to... <laughs> Call anyway. him back. Call him back. Anyway, anyway. Oh. Unreal. Thank you, Callum. I that hope you happy you. birthday, motherfucker. And I hope you have the most amazing time with Lucy in Lake Como right now. You deserve it, you little fuck. Absolutely. Um, enjoying the shit out of it. So thank you so much again for your wonderful treatures. You birthday hero, you. Oh, we love you. Um, but yeah, just like you, mate, I am absolutely shattered. Yeah, I was about to say, how are you? <laughs> absolutely shattered. Uh, getting a late night recording in, so I'm more than happy with that. Uh, love doing this, though. Okay. Um, and Valentino, what a guest. Oh. What a what a guest this week. Um, it's been absolutely incredible. How's, uh, how's your personal week been? Yeah, it's been all right. Um, I've been reannering most of last week and now back in today. Um, past I had two days off, but the first day is just a wipeout because I'm so tired from doing night shifts. It's just a wipeout. We did a great interview that day, and then I went and saw the kids yesterday, which was always fun. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I haven't really done much this week. It's all right. How was that? Yeah, they're all good. I, I my my uh, weekly walk back with Harrison because he's always at work when I'm there. So he always walks me to the train station on the way back. So we always have a nice little father son natter on the way back. Yeah, all good. All good. Lena's now begging me to take her to go see the new Beetlejuice film because she just loves all things Tim Burton. She's turning into a little goth, and I'm all for it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, I've not really done much. Have you seen the new Beetlejuice movie? Not yet. I do want to go see it, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, verdict, I bet you love it. I don't know. Probably. It's me. I you like things. Everything. You mock yeah. me, but I'd rather be a person that likes things instead of hating on everything. So it's fine. I'm happy. I don't, but I don't hate on everything. I just no, I know you don't. I'm saying. I you know, can make opinions of my own where I decide on whether I like it or not, rather than, know. you know, that was great, and it was absolute dog shit. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> as long as I'm entertained, it's all groovy. Why are you not I got it. Yeah. Why are you not entertained? Um, <laughs> I have been reannering. Uh, I've been in the high street this week, so so far so good. Because there are wrestling fans in there, so oh nice, yeah. And there's men in there to talk to, hey. so yeah, it's kind of nice. Um, so I'm in there tomorrow and Friday as well. Uh, but yesterday didn't just didn't end, and lack of staff, it just didn't stop. The people just did not stop coming. And I think I lost my voice by the end of yesterday because I talked so much that by the end of Tuesday afternoon, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> um that's literally what was coming out of my face uh so i've been doing a lot of reannering um obviously nfl sunday uh steelers won again um, which is wonderful i also broke my own record for nfl fantasy score i scored 190 points and i was just a bit like what the fuck so nice. I'm, two, I'm two and zero at the moment in fantasy. So yeah. we're, loving, we're loving that at the moment. But last year I went two and zero. It was top, and I lost every single game after. So okay. hopefully that's not the way it's going to go. But I had a lot of injured players where I haven't got injured players this time. So um, so far so good. Um, yeah, everything fucking crossed. Um, I'm playing the guy that finished bottom this week coming. So finished bottom last year. So yeah. fingers crossed. I don't really understand how fantasy football works, if I'm honest with you. So. The NFL is you just pick a player, and when you pick a player, nobody else can have that player. Oh, okay. And, and it's like a snake draft. So I drafted seventh to 14. So it's like one through 14, 14 back to one, and so on and so forth. So I'm in the middle of the whole thing. So it's like one to 14, then 14 picks 15, and it goes back across to number one again. Then one picks twice, and it goes back to 14. And 14 picks twice goes back to one exit. Snakes. 
That's the brain, just, the brain just exploded in my head. It's very straightforward. <laughs> it wasn't. Number one picks one. Yes. Number two picks two. So on and so forth. When it gets to 14. Yes. 14 picks twice. 14 and 15. And then 13 picks 16. And, and it goes back across to number one okay. again. Now I'm with you. Yeah. Now I'm with you. Now I'm with you. And then one picks twice. Yes. Okay. Now I'm with you. Now I'm yeah? With you. yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes back again. Okay. And obviously, I, I pick seventh. So I was right in the middle. <laughs> and there's always one knobhead that takes the whole eight hours to choose. You're like, oh my God, come on. <laughs> so it takes weeks to fucking get the draft finished. Um, but I'm confident at the moment that I might actually get out of this league this year for the fifth year running. Finally, might get out of the bottom division, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, NFL has been great. Love, I love that that's back. It just makes me so happy on a Sunday night. It just feels like like everything's right in the world again. Everything's <laughs> normal. Um, Aberdeen also won. They're they're on a ten game win streak at the moment in the in the football in soccer football. So we haven't lost or drawn a game this season yet. So that, I'm loving that as well. Um, I'll do well. Yeah, it's weird at the <clears> moment. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, but yeah, man. Other than that. I went out last night, went to Wagamama's, oh, very nice. um, had some dins, went to the bottle of sauce. That was really nice. Um, got shouted at for, please don't fist me. That was quite interesting. Sorry, what? Um, yeah, that generally was what that, that said, I just said. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, I went out public, with, Jesus. When I... Hello? So as you're probably aware, you've probably just noticed a massive jump. In the uh, <laughs> in the recording, basically, I just suffered a power cut, um, and that's why. So I was happily blabbering on. Noticed Jamie wasn't moving. I was like, "That's interesting. Why is he not moving?" And then realised that the lights were all off. I was like, "Oh, I'll um, do it." Yeah. So massive power cut. What the fuck was I talking about? I was literally about to say, "Can you remember what you're talking about?" Because I can't remember now after all that. <laughs> I think I talked about going to. Oh, we're talking about fisting. Yes, that was it. You uh, I, about, I went to Wag- I went to Wagaman. Yesterday, yes. with uh, with Anna, went to Waggers and we had a few cokes in bottle of sauce, and we had just had a conversation, and it, she basically blurted out, "Please don't fist me," and I was just like, "Sorry," and then we laughed about that for about ten minutes uh, because she full on burst out. I can't remember what we're talking about. We talking about something, um, and she basically says, "Please don't fist me," and she also said, "Would you like to eat out my bowl?" Um, which I also found very funny. Um, and it was just a very fun night last night. Um, so yeah, uh, that happened. Uh, other than that, like I said, re-entering, um, and I'm currently, as we are speaking right now, I'm halfway through AW All Out. Um, okay. I just watched, I'm on the Continental Classic Fatal 4-Way, but that Willow Nightingale and Statlander match was amazing, but my God, how is Willow not like snapped in half? <laughs> I don't know, have you seen it? I haven't, though. I've heard it was really good, though. Statlander does a swanton off the top rope to the outside to Willow to go through a table. Willow gets off the table to get out of the way, but doesn't get out of the way in time. And Statlander's legs, so her, so she's sat and her legs crush her, so her head goes to where her feet are. Ow. Yeah. yeah. Are, you suppressing, are you suppressing a yawn there, Jamie? I was trying to suppress a yawn, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like you were sucking on a sour sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm quite tired. <laughs> that story was so boring. <laughs> See, this is why I was trying to suppress it because I fucking knew you'd say that. <laughs> but it's so fucking, oh my God, he's so much wrestling again. Jesus Christ, can we move on? Knackered over here. Sorry about the power cut, mate. It wasn't my fault. So, yeah. anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, shall we, just, shall we just move on? Yeah, go on then. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brayden from Say We Can Fly. Just letting you know, I've got a brand new merch store out there. Please let me say the and, link. Uh, let me say the link, please. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yes, you can say. You can say the link. Yes. All right. Okay. So the link for the shop. So the, link for, is... the link for the shop is www.saywecanfly.com. Shop. All right, good job, Seamus. So www.saywecanfly.shop, uh, 10% off if you use the, co- oh, the let code. Let me say the code, let me say the code, please. Okay, fine, you can say the code. If you use the code. The code is The Chronicles. What? No, it's not. The Chronicles. No, it's not. De- it's The Chronicles, Seamus. Yeah, that's what I okay? said. The Chronicles, 
at checkout, all right? You, you get 10% off. 10% off? Yes, yes, they know. They know, Seamus. Okay. I'm just trying to help, all right? Visit www.saywecanfly.shop and use code THE CHRONICLES for 10% off your order. Available at participating Say We Can Fly restaurants and web stores. Some restrictions may apply, but probably not. Okay, time for Tom's journal. <laughs> And welcome to another edition of Tom's Journal. So, this is a scam text that I thought was fucking hilarious. Okay. Dear, dear loyal customer, your bank account is being closed. Please confirm PIN at HTTP colon four slash four slash a stupid, like, shitty website thing. The reply was, is this a scam? <laughs> and I said, No. And they put <laughs> Brian Mum's life. They put oh my mum's life, fam. <laughs> What's funny is I can imagine that being true. These scam people are fucking stupid. I've watched uh, I watched a video recently again, Doom Squad on Instagram, where um, people were fucking over the scammers. <laughs> so they you know they buy like iTunes vouchers, like 150, 200 quid in iTunes vouchers, yes. and send the codes over. And they were paying for the vouchers, then redeeming them. And they're going, no, no, I told you not to redeem it. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, no. Like, really funny. So, then, oh, I thought I had to redeem it. No, what are you doing? I told you not to redeem it. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> so what is an uplifting and happy fact? Sunflowers face the sun. When they cannot find the sun, they face each other. Oh. Sunflower one. Where's the sun, bro? Sunflower two. You are my sun, bro. <laughs> Sunflower one. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that is very heartwarming. <laughs> this, isn't it? I like that. <laughs> oh. Jamie, I truly, truly think... There should be more options for donating your corpse when after you die. What if I don't want to donate my body to science? Why can't I donate it to a struggling music program so they can use my ribs as xylophones? <laughs> or a damn that farmer that is a new scarecrow? Give me some options. <laughs> it's one of the ones on the like, yeah, it's a good point actually, but at the same time, there's probably a good job, good job that you can't do that. <laughs> Although donating your rib cage for a xylophone is fucking great. Imagine it creates like this whole brand new fucking genre of music with xylophone. It's like just, just playing the Tom, just playing the Tom, <laughs> just playing the James. It's playing the James. It's the Chris. That's the Chris. That is <laughs> Jamie. Don't you think it's fucking mental how grinds of a black belt in homemade soup? <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, I like that. Sure, <laughs> oh. though. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and set up a complaint box at work. People think HR have set it up, but it was me. At the end of every week, I take the box home and read about all this petty drama that's been built up. <laughs> That is a genius idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that is also a genius idea. Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> Daughter. Daddy, can I keep the nightlight on? Me. What? And provide the monsters with a beacon to your location? Use your head, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sometimes I wish I'd thought of these things. It's all right, right. right. Do you remember the Microsoft hack, the outage that happened? About two Vaguely, months ago. Vaguely, yeah. About two months ago. Microsoft outage, but Teams and Outlook are still both fine. It's the adult version of Snow that doesn't set enough for a school closure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember those days. It's snowing, it's school closed. No, you're still going in. 
mate, Canadians fucking swam through it. <laughs> they waved their way through it. They, they, they never closed. They laughed in the face of the Brits. Oh, don't blame as soon as we get as soon as we get one millimeter of ice, we're like, ah, <laughs> and they just laugh at us like we're fucking pathetic. Me, I like your t-shirt, three-year-old. You can't wear it. Me, all right. Well, I didn't ask. Three-year-old because you're too fat. Me, all right. I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a bit harsh for a year old. Jesus. Yeah, I know. It's about it, right? Working class white lads. That made me feel quite ill saying that out loud. Have the deadliest banter. Guy on site has one arm and have nicknamed him Octopus. Well, the boy I work with is called Anthony and he's only five foot. Gets called Shetland Tony. <laughs> Best nickname ever. You're not going to top that. That's the best one ever. Oh, so good. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. That's uh, so, so fantastic. A couple more. Jamie, have you ever wondered how many houses you've passed in your lifetime that may have people locked in the basement? <laughs> well, I fucking do now. I was going to say no, <laughs> but now I am. What is someone locked in the basement over there? Oh, God, that's creepy to think, isn't it? Ooh. Yes, awful to think actually. <laughs> and finally, and I know you're going to love this for how much you love it. Oh, God. Absolutely no one. Old lady from Titanic. Right, listen up about this poor guy I fucked on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I love that film, like you say, but essentially it is an old woman telling a story about some fucking poor guy that she shagged in a car. That's yeah. pretty much it. And then there was plenty of room <laughs> on that door and she killed him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But that was another edition of Tom's Journal. Fucking brilliant, that is. <laughs> it's about getting into schools and talking to young people because, you know, I, I know that people can change. Uh, and, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever. And we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there. Absolutely. Hey there, guys. We are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults, and those who wish to be as different as possible. So thank you very much. To find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do, and more importantly, how you can help, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Mama, Mr. Stevens. Woo! Mr. Stevens. Mama, Mr. Stevens. Mr. Stevens. Mr. Stevens. What the fuck is that? It's raining men. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. I see. Near, far, wherever Jamie is. We will participate in oh. his challenge. It's beautiful. You were enjoying it. Well, we just mentioned Titanic, and I hadn't thought of a song, <laughs> I panicked. So then when I know how much you love that movie, I was like, fuck it, I'll go for that. <laughs> we need Celine Dion when I got Tom. <laughs> I mean, you need Celine Dion for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's audience. Participation time. Participate. Participate. Participate, bitch. Participate in Jamie's challenge, you bitch. <laughs> Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to participate in Jamie's Participation Challenge. <laughs> that might be my favourite ending to one ever. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Knew that was coming. It's my favourite my favorite version of that so far. <laughs> it's just a participate, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this week I said us Brits, they like to say we'll stick anything in between two slices of bread and call it a sandwich, and they're probably right. So this week we're asking, what is your favourite unconventional sandwich filling? What say you, Mr. Stevens? So I'll tell you a story first before I answer this question. So I had a conversation with Luke about this when I was at Cardiff Specsavers about how you could tell how rich or poor somebody was by the filling of their sandwich. Um, so we talked about when if you got the bear ham that you knew that they were quids in and they were living the dream a little bit. If they oh, they, if they had like quail's eggs or something ridiculous. <laughs> but then if you knew that they had jam or ketchup that they were living hard times. Um, so I was a lemon curd man. And I absolutely love lemon curd. And that was a sandwich I used to have at school. So for me, it's lemon curd. I can't remember if I like lemon curd. It's been that long since I've Bloody loved it. I used to put it on toast. I used to have it on crumpets. I used to have it everywhere. I was obsessed. To the point <laughs> where I haven't had it for so long. I might as well get it. I know that's not very original or out there because I've seen some of the answers you've got and fucking hell, people are mental. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was my go-to. Now, mine, I've said it, several have said it on this show before, and I always get funny looks for it, but it's cold baked beans. I fucking love cold baked bean sandwich. It's incredible. So, what about your personality, mate? <laughs> what the fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Bland, cold, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, I think this knife's yours. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. As, as you said, we have got so many fucking answers to this. TikTok loved this one. Like, I think over 300 responses we had on TikTok. Like, fair play. Fair you play. Have 300, are you? I, I am. Strap in. No. <laughs> I've whittled it down. Well, first, we'll get some... Our good friend Jude from Acid Age basically just threw his wife under the bus and says that she loves a Mars bar and pear sandwich. Okay. Yeah, to be fair, she does jump her defence and so absolutely fucking not. That was her granny speciality and she's never even tried it in her life. But, yeah, not, not pear and Mars bar. Oh. <clears throat> James McPhee, our friend formerly of Moon Reaper, says, two slices of bread and ketchup sorted. Wow. So I used to do that when I was a kid. I used to do ketchup sandwiches when I was a kid. Our friend Sarah Hughes from Shifty Pop says, my son likes honey, jam, and ham in one go. Okay. I can get honey. I can get honey and jam even made sweet. I can kind of see it, but with ham as well. That's a bit odd. <laughs> that is very odd. Whatever tickles the buds. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Let's go over to TikTok. There's a lot of answers, but I'll go through them as quick as I can. Lydia Manson, former guest. White bread with butter and spaghetti is the filling. Okay. What what spaghetti though? We're talking plain pasta. That's from what I'm taking from this, because there was no mention of any sauce, just Oh spaghetti. Lydia. Oh. Yeah. Sinbad. This one concerns me. I asked him if he meant this together, but he didn't respond to me. Chicken and custard, and the custard must be cold. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> There's no answer to that. There is, it's the, that's the problem with some of these. Uh, Ian's away. Pepperoni pizza. It's already got bread on the bottom. It sounds like a new Coca-Cola flavour, that does. It does, doesn't it? Pepperoni pizza, coke. I could see it happening. Or chicken and custard. <laughs> or, or. Susie Q, cottage pie. Why? Wow. <laughs> that would That would work. That would work. That was one. I'm like, why would you do it? But at the same time, I can see how it would work. Yeah, that'd work. I Claire, like that. Claire, peanut butter and HP sauce. Oh, I love those two. Together, though. Yeah. I kind of want to try that now. I thought you might somehow. <laughs> might, might be new Coca-Cola flavor, that. <laughs> you can say it for fucking <laughs> <laughs> K 
Cara Leanne, lasagna or enchiladas? Oh, enchiladas. I Get mean, a sandwich. my new favourite person right there. It's already in bread. What's in a wrap? The wrap's bread, in a way. Sort Tortilla. Of. It's not bread. Yeah, but sort of. Oh. <laughs> Wilkie, bacon and banana. I'm undecided if that sounds delicious or not. They have bacon and pancakes in America, so that I guess that kind of works. Yeah. Vic says ham and lemon curd. That's not that doesn't I'll sound be, right. I'd be down. I'd be down. <laughs> Sean, mushy peas and mint sauce. Okay. Just the, just the idea of mushy, mushy peas makes me feel a little bit sick. They have <laughs> mint sauce. Mint sauce is a no no. Yeah. Scott Porter. Cornflakes with tomato sauce between two slices of buttered bread. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't okay. even know what to say to some of these. Uh, user Grandmaster 62 needs professional help. Raspberry jam and salmon paste. Oh. Oh, no. Bish. Okay. <laughs> That's out there. That's like chicken and custard. It's probably new for a flavor of Coca-Cola right there. <laughs> Dee Dee, she needs to take her sister to therapy. My sister puts her Sunday roast in a sandwich. Yeah, that sounds banging. Really? <clears throat> you can't put it in a... Um... But saying that, when I've had a roast, I do like to mop up the leftover gravy with a slice of bread. So maybe it could work. Okay, I'll let you off, Dee Dee. I'll let you off. Well, I'll let your sister off. <laughs> Elaine Bowman. Frozen peas, yes, cooked, but needs to be butter on the bread. Just a just a pea sandwich. Oh, boring. Very boring. M Man 001. I used to know someone that had a lettuce and sugar and marzipan sandwich. Wow, okay. That's it is so interesting. <laughs> I just can't get my head around what people think to go these will go in bread. Like Gareth Ronald, mashed potato and salad cream. That would work. I can see why they did that, yeah. Gareth Harvard. Fajita mix. Nice. To me, is that the actual fajita mix that you put in the wraps, or is that the powder? Because I, I doubt it's fajita mix, I think powder. I'm assuming it means the mix of chicken and everything else. That sounds delicious, actually. <laughs> You're down for that one. <laughs> and last but not least, because it's the most British answer out of them all. Moose Cooper, we're British. Everything goes in a fucking sandwich. You're right, Moose. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Everything goes in a sandwich, at least according to these answers. Like I said, we had over 300 answers to that. I had to narrow that down. That was not an easy task. I, I remember working with a guy called Matt who used to have what's it some ketchup in his sandwiches. What's it's because crisp sandwich, hell's yeah, but with ketchup. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. But thank you to everyone that participated in Jamie's challenge. Thank you to everyone that listens to this show. Thank you, Valentina, for joining us. Uh, it's been a hell of a, a hell of an addition this week. Yeah, if you enjoy been. Jamie's participation challenge, Callum's treatings, Tom's journal, the interview, and the okay, but mm, maybe mm, I don't think so. <laughs> then you enjoy the other 142 editions of the Conquest Podcast, wherever you get your podcast from, maybe Spotify, Google, Apple, all that good stuff. You know where it's from. But the most important thing is that you come and follow us on all social media at TCO Pod. That's all social media at TCO Pod. Or come and subscribe to us on YouTube at The Chronicles of Podcast. Make sure you hit that bell to get notified when your videos are released and comment to your heart's content. So again, all social media, any of it, at TCO Pod. And subscribe on YouTube at The Chronicles of Podcast. Jamie? Yes? What was that you were saying? Oh, I was going to say a massive thank you to a few of our friends. First off, every single piece of music you heard on today's edition was brought to you by the wonderful singer-songwriter Matt Roberts. Go check him out on all social media at Matt Roberts Music. Give him a follow on Spotify. Subscribe to him on YouTube and wait for new music to come out. We're waiting, Matt. Where is it? And of course, we have to say a massive thank you to Mr. Braden Barry and his Say We Can Fly dot shop. Head on over to Say We Can Fly dot shop. See what you like the look of. It could be apparel, signed lyrics, CDs, no matter what it is. Stick it in your basket. Enter that discount code, The Chronicles, and get yourself 10% off your order. How about that? And last but not least, a massive thank you to the Sophie Lancaster Foundation because they are stamping out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance 
everywhere. And I say it every week and I'm going to say it again this week. And I mean everywhere. This is not a UK issue. This is a global issue where people of the alternative community are being treated differently simply because of the way they look or the music they listen to. It's not on. We're not having it. So let's help them put it to an end. Head on over to sophielancasterfoundation.com. See, familiarize yourself with Sophie's story and share it out in the world because the more people we know, the more people we get knowing Sophie's story, the more impact we can make and hopefully we can put an end to this once and for all. And last but not least, massive thank you to my beautiful co-host over there. Right back at you. Right back at you. Jamie, another Hello. superb edition of the bag. Another superb one indeed. Valentina, thank you so much again for taking time on your insanely busy schedule to join us this week. It's been graciously appreciated. We look forward to having you back on again in the future. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can't believe we've got another one in the bag. So it's unbelievable. But as for this week, we will see you all next week for the Chronicles of Defects 2. Goodbye, everybody. Ta-ta. Bye.